Welcome to the UC Botanical Garden. My name is Louis Feldman, and I'm the director of the garden. Today, what I'd like to do is to talk to you about the plant that I'm holding in front of me, which is a carnivorous plant known as Saracenia. This plant is indigenous to the United States. It grows along the eastern seaboard in Texas and along the Great Lakes, and from the Great Lakes, it extends up into southern Canada. This is a very interesting uh, plant with regard to capturing insects, which are used for supplementing the diet of this plant. The ability to capture insects is based upon a modification of a structure on the plant, which is known as a leaf. And this tube-like structure, which is actually the trap for the insect, is a modified leaf. What I'd like to do now is tell you something about the features which make this leaf such an excellent trap, an excellent way of capturing insects. The first thing I want to remind you of is the insectivorous plant that most of you are familiar with, the Venus flytrap, works by having a moving part. In these carnivorous plants, there are no moving parts, yet it is able to capture insects because of a couple of important characteristics. And they include color, which attracts the insect. They include an odor, which may be very attractive to the insect. And the plant also makes a reward, which is nectar, which is sweet and attracts insects. So in this plant, we have a number of ways of capturing and attracting insects that don't depend upon any mechanical movement. Now let's look a little more closely at the leaf of one of these plants. In this view, uh, which is a close-up view of the plant, you can see the parts which make up this modified leaf. You can see the hood here, and the hood is very colorful. You can see the mouth, and the mouth is the region in which the nectar is produced, and then the inner portion of the mouth is very slippery, and along that inner portion, the insect loses its footing and then falls down into the tube. Here you can see the leaf is divided into a hood and then a tube. The hood serves the function of having color, bringing the insect to the trap, but also it covers the trap and prevents the trap from filling up with rainwater, which would be detrimental to the digestion of the insect. The other aspect of the leaf which is very important is the mouth of the, of the trap. The mouth of the trap is where nectar is produced. Insects are drawn or attracted to the mouth of the plant, but aside from producing nectar, it also is very slippery. And when the insect stumbles, it falls into the trap. And when it falls into the trap, it descends down about midway to the trap where it encounters a small pool of water. And then the insect falls into that water and drowns. That water contains enzymes which are secreted by the plant. And also, if there are bacteria growing in the water, bacteria secrete enzymes. Together, those two enzymes digest the insect and allow the nutrients to be absorbed by the leaf and also by the bacteria. Now you might ask, why doesn't the insect just crawl out from the leaf? Well, if you could look at the inside of the leaf with a microscope, you would find that there are small downward pointing hairs lining the inner wall, and that prevents the insect from crawling out, and it pretty well drowns. Next, what we want to do is to cut open one of these leaves and look the inside of the leaf. So I'm going to take this leaf here, which I have cut off from this particular plant of Saracenia, and we're going to cut it open and then look at the remains of the insects which are still in the trap. And remember that an insect has a wall on the outside known as an exoskeleton. In the trap of these plants, the enzymes that are produced will not digest the outer wall of the insect. They will leave the exoskeleton intact, but they will digest the inner part of the insect. So when we cut this leaf open, what we're going to find is the exoskeletons of insects which have long ago been digested. And now what we're going to do is take a look at these exoskeletons, exoskeletons in a little brighter light. And I can see already that there are bees inside here. There are some beetles. And there are also some flies. So here you can see the insects which were captured inside this leaf here. And they are the exoskeletons, the remains, the outer walls of the insect. And in this one, it looks like there are some flies and some bees and uh, also probably some ants. And there are the remains of some beetles inside uh, this leaf. So this leaf has digested these insect inner portions and left behind the exoskeletons, which allow us to identify the insect. And with this, the plant then gains an extra source of nutrients, often in the form of nitrogen and in proteins and amino acids. In this particular species of pitcher plant, notice the ants climbing up to the mouth of the pitcher plant, and they're congregating along where the lip is. That's because that's where the nectar is being produced. Some of the ants will fall into the trap, 
and be digested, and some of them will go away much happier.